Okay, here we go. You're at the cash register, and you have two pounds of apples, three bananas, and a bottle of water in your cart. Now here's the important question. Does the order in which the cashier scans the items change the total cost you'll end up paying? Of course not. Whatever the order, the price always remains the same. Well, there you have it. You've just seen an example of the commutative property of addition. Sounds a bit difficult as a term, but the idea is quite simple. The commutative property of addition means the order in which the numbers are added does not change their sum. It doesn't matter if you add 1 to 5 or 5 to 1. It makes no difference. The result is always going to be 6. The same thing will happen at the cash register because of the commutative property. The order in which the prices of the products are added up doesn't matter at all. The total will always be the same. In addition to the commutative property, the associative property of addition is going to be your best friend and help you a lot when doing math problems, especially when it comes to doing easier mental math. To see what I mean, let's take a closer look with the following situation. This is Anne. She has five pairs of sandals, three pairs of boots, and two pairs of sneakers. The question is, how many pairs of shoes does she have in total? Just think of the fastest and the easiest way to sum it up. First, I can add two and three. Well, that equals five. Now, I still have five more to go, and so I'm going to take the five I had from the sum of two and three and add it to the other five. Five and five, ten. Okay, I know that making calculations like this could be pretty easy for you already. But what if the add-ins were two-digit or even three-digit numbers? Well, that's a bit harder, trust me. So the associative property of addition enables you to change the places of the add-ins, to group them together, and at the same time to be sure their sum or answer remains unchanged. How do you group the add-ins? As in the question for Anne's shoes, you grouped 2 plus 3, and then you added 5. It's completely fine to add 2 to 5 first and then to add 3. Just be careful and make sure that you add all the numbers. Regardless of how you add them up, the answer will always be the same. The choice is yours. The associative property is there to help. It states, the way in which numbers are grouped when added does not change the sum. Last but not least comes the identity property of addition. It's the easiest one, really. Now here's the property itself. The sum of any number plus zero equals the number. Let me give you a scenario. You have eight dollars. Mike gives you zero more. Guess how much you have now? That's right, eight. Exactly eight, not a cent more. Good job. Time for some practice. In the first task, you need to identify the property used and to explain why you think it's that property. Let's look at problem A. 3 plus 2 equals 2 plus 3. You notice the same add-ins on both sides of the equation, but their places are changed, which means precisely this is the commutative property of addition in practice. Why? Well, as I've already mentioned, the order of the add-ins is changed with the commutative property. Let's look at problem B. 16 plus 0 equals 16. Hmm. If a 0 is an addend in an equation, think about the identity property of addition. This is the one shown here. Why? Because adding 0 to a number does not change the original value of the number. 16 remains 16. Moving on. Task number 2. It's a word problem, so read it carefully. Bob needs to find the sum of 95, 14, and 16. How can he group the add-ins to make it easier to add? Look at the add-ins first. 95, 14, and 16. Bob can regroup them, which means he'll take advantage of the associative property of addition. Why does he need to do that? To make the calculations easier. In this case, I want to find two numbers that will give me a multiple of 10. Or find two numbers that do not need regrouping. It'll be worth it. So, in looking at my three add-ins, 95, 14, and 16, I notice that 14 and 16 could make a multiple of 10. And so I'm going to group 14 plus 16. You see, 6 to 4, uh, that equals 10. You write the zero ones, then you carry the 1 up to the tens. 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3 tens. So 16 plus 14 equals 30. Now, you just need to add 95 to 30. 
Let's look at the ones place first. Five plus zero is five ones. Now let's look at the tens place. Ninety plus thirty is one hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty plus five is one hundred twenty-five. That's the answer. Fourteen plus sixteen plus ninety-five is one hundred twenty-five. You've just applied the associative property of addition to make it easier for Bob to solve the problem. Awesome! Wow, we did a great job with these exercises. Now let's remind ourselves of the most important rules from this lesson. The commutative property lets you change the places of the atoms without changing the sum. The associative property lets you group the atoms without their sum being changed. And the identity property deals with zeros. The sum of any number n zero equals the number itself. You are so ready for the next video lesson. I'll be waiting for you there.